Hi, everybody. Um, I want to thank our pastors for inviting me to lead today's devotion. So let's get started. I'm calling this one, You Are Essential. Because um, lately I've seen on TV and heard on radio, um, there's a lot of focus on the negative feelings people are experiencing because of this virus pandemic. And yes, I know there's times we see good stories about folks doing nice things for others, and that's great. But now there's even commercials promoting apps that you can download for clearing your mind from worries and stress of being considered non-essential and feeling anxious or lonely or scared or frustrated or angry um, and maybe even hungry. Just the word pandemic is unsettling and as this stay-at-home order persists, the negatives seem to grow. Our county hasn't even applied to enter phase one yet, so that end of the tunnel just keeps getting farther and farther away from that life we remember as being normal. Um, so the longer this goes, the more tempting it is for our negative emotions to intensify. But that is not God's intent for our lives, pandemic or not. So in my humble opinion, it's important to stop and take time to reboot and refresh. How do you do that when you feel overwhelmed? Maybe one of those apps being advertised is for you, and that's okay. But another way is to simply open your Bible or listen to your Bible uh, audible and get reminded about who God is and what promises he has spoken for you. Um, Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created heavens and earth. Everyone, Christian or not, is familiar with that passage. And whether a person chooses to believe it or not really doesn't matter because it is still a declaration of God's supremacy. Another one of my favorite verses um, you'll be familiar with, it's um, in Psalm 139. And David said, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came into being. For me, both of these passages confirm the greatness of our God. Would you meditate on all of that it says? It's amazing. Another passage from Ephesians, Paul tells us, For he chose us, and that's God doing it, and it's not us doing it. He chose us in him before the creation of the earth to be holy and blameless in his sight. Now, I know there's a lot of theologians that get into long discussions about this passage, and I'm not a theologian, and now's not the time I want to debate predestination and stuff like that. All I'm trying to point out today is before the in the beginning that the Old Testament started with, you're already there was already a lot going on for you regarding you. God had already known you before he created the world. And knew every bit of your life before you were ever born. That goes for you, it goes for me, for every human being. That from the past, people now, and those waiting to be born. His word tells us, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, and plans to give you hope and a future. And later he said, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a member of it. So what do we do with these promises? How does, how does all of that fit into this day? And how does that give encouragement when maybe I'm just not feeling it? And here's a reminder. His desire is to have an intimate relationship with each of us. But he's not going to force it on us. We have to take some initiative to cultivate our friendship with the Lord. Today, have a conversation with him. Do it several times a day. Speak to him with those raw emotions you're bombarded with right now. There are times when it's appropriate to close your eyes and bow your head and fold your hands in reverent awe and respect because only he deserves it. But it's also okay to just talk to him or even scream if you need to. It really is okay. I, I promise you, you're never going to hear him say, whoa, I've never heard that before, and then suddenly send a bullet of lightning on you. Um, it's not going to happen. He's not going to zap you out because of anything that you have to say. Um, but the more openly, earnestly, honestly you are with him, the more real you are, the more you're going to feel his peace. The more you will be encouraged. 
the more you get reminded that you are essential to God and his plan. He purposely made you to be that one part of the body of Christ he designed only you to fill. The more you share every bit of your life with him and listen for his direction, the more you will know that you're not alone. Now, I don't want to give the false impression that I have it all together because I don't, but prayerfully, this devotion will help all of us for those times that we need it. And remember that he's with you and he's in charge. He's bigger than a virus and we will get through this. So reboot, refresh, and rest in him. Let's pray. Faithful Father, thank you that you are always near. Thank you for inviting us to have a deep and intimate relationship with you, the maker of heaven and earth. Thank you that you alone are God and your desire for us is peace and strength and rest. I pray all these things in the name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Amen.